All right, so we're going to be conducting the midterm review. Basically, this is just a, a number of problems that we uh, would work in class. Uh, so we have on here the first question. Uh, you see here Wells Fargo offering account a simple 3% compounded semi-annual. What is the effective rate? Now, when we're doing this, is, is our, our basic equation that we have to remember, right, is that when we look at a future value, right, it's PV times 1 plus R raised to the T power. Now, when we're doing a single time period, that means that T is equal to 1. And we're basically taking a, uh, we're trying to figure out what our yearly rate is going to be. So if I'm presented a 3% simple rate, that means that my yearly rate is going to be also going to be 3%. Okay. Um, now, what we have to do when we convert that into a semi-annual time period, right, is that we have uh, to take our interest rate and divide it by 2. And then we have to raise that to the second power, right? So this is going to be 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 2. Remember, that always has to be uh, moved into decimal form. So 0 0.03 raised to the second power, right? So that's going to end up being point. Uh, uh, 0, 0.015 to the second power, okay? And then we have to subtract 1 off of that because what you'll see is if you punch this in your calculator, you're going to get 1.030225. So that's basically telling us that we have a semi, a effective annual rate of 3.0225%, okay? Um, now, what you notice is that we have a 2 here, we have a 2 here. They always have to match. If I was looking at this trying to figure out as a quarterly rate, right, this would be 1 plus r divided by 4 to the 4th power, right? We have two 4s here. We subtract off the 1 to get that number back, okay? Uh, then we also have, uh, if we're doing monthly, it's going to be r divided by 12 raised to the 12th minus 1. If we're doing annual, it's going to be 1 plus r divided by 360 to the 360th power, minus 1, and that's going to give us at least in decimal form. Okay. Uh, then the next one that we're looking at here is that uh, we're looking at a bond offering and uh, trying to determine the interest rate. Um, so we're given a number of things here. Uh, we have comparable bonds are at the 178 51, right? And that's basically what mar market price is. This is market price. So this is saying this is the price at which they would be able to sell it, this bond at, right? So this is going to be uh, P0. That's, that's our current price. Okay, we have a face value here of $387, All right? So that's also going to be our future value. Remember that face value, maturity value, principal value, par value. Those all mean the same exact thing. That's going to be that lump sum that is received at the end of the period. Okay, uh, and then we're looking at this, and we have uh, currently have payments of thirty-three dollars. Okay, so these are our coupon payments. Okay, so these are our coupon payments. So this is going to be when we enter into our calculator, it's going to be that payment, right? And then we have a maturity in seven years, so that's going to be n. Right. So essentially what we're saying here is we have seven payments, right? We have seven payments at $33 and one lump sum at $387. Okay? And what we're trying to do here is that the only thing that we're missing here is interest rate, is that R. Okay? So uh, we plug all this stuff in. Basically it's going to be uh, N is 7, I over Y is what we are trying to, to determine, PV, we're going to enter as negative 178.51, uh, we're going to have payment of 33, and we're going to have future value of 387, so let me hit compute, in interest rate, and so we're showing here an interest rate of 25.9 repeating, so 26%. Okay, so that's basically what we would have as our interest rate, is 26%. All right, uh, now we're looking at, uh, basically we're, what we're looking at here is we're trying to compute the yield. Remember that when we're, whenever we're looking at these, we want to determine what the question is asking. This question is asking what our yield is. 
And remember, when we look at our yield, is that we have our price appreciation yield, right, which is new price minus old price divided by old price. So this is our price appreciation yield. And then we also have our dividend yield, right? So we also add on to this well, dividend and our interest, okay, divided by the price that we paid, okay? And on that is that we have, on this question, we don't have any interest payments, right? The, this common stock isn't going to be paying interest. So uh, when we put this all in is that we have the, uh, the price paid is, is on the bottom here, which is 30. The new price is $33.86. So we end up getting a yield in the amount of 13.7%. All right, once again, this is a, uh, another question. We're trying to figure out what our dividend is. Um, so we know our yield. So same sort of question here. We know our yield is 12.9%. So that's going to be 0.129. And that's going to be equal to um, the amount that you sold, which was 93.41 minus the $88. And that's going to be divided by $88. And then we have to add on your dividend, right? That's the thing that we're solving for, OK? So when we do that, is that we could take the, um, the 0.129 and multiply both sides by 88. Okay, So we end up with 11.352 is equal to 5.41 plus our dividend. Right? So the amount of our dividend, and then, so we subtract 5.41 off of both sides. The amount of our dividend was $5.94. All right, now we are looking at just the comparison on the uh, discount dividend model versus the Gordon growth model. Remember, the discount dividend model, we are looking at the total amount of dividends in the future, and we are discounting those back to the, today's current period. Um, and so our basic formula that we use is going to be our price today is equal to our dividend in the first period. And then we discount that. And then we have our price in the first period. And then we discount that as well. Okay. Uh, and so this is a sim simple manner is that over the year is that we look at what the price we could sell this for next year and then the uh, amount of our dividend and then we divide by 1 plus r. This is basically just an extension of that yield question. Okay. Uh, but then the next thing that we ask is that so how do we get P1, right? How do we get this number right here? And basically all we do is we, we just lag these, these numbers back, right? So P1 is going to be equal to D2 divided by 1 plus r plus P2 divided by 1 plus R. Right? And we know that if we were to look for P2, is that we just lag that back. It's P2 is equal to D3 over 1 plus R. Now, one thing important to recognize is that we have on the bottom here is that these are still raised to the first power. They're not raised to the second, even though D2 is on the top. The reason being is that we're only looking to discount this a single time period. Right? We're going from P1 to P2. Right? So, what we do then is that if we want to insert this in into that part at P1 is that we end up with P0 is equal to D1 over 1 plus R plus D2 over 1 plus R squared plus P2 over 1 plus R squared. Now you see that D2 is now squared because that is taking two time periods, right? We have D2, which is 2, P0, which is 0, so 2 minus 0 is 2, right? So we're taking this to the second power. Okay, anytime that we're doing a discount dividend model, we are putting in this construct. Okay, and essentially what we have here is that this is the same sort of thing that we see with a coupon bond. On the left-hand side here, this D1 and D2, this is the annuity portion. Okay, and this P2 over on the right side is the lump sum portion. So essentially what we have here is that all that has changed is that this D2, this D these dividend payments, you would insert in your, your calculator, you do it like you would... For a, uh, for a coupon payment, right? And the R is still the same thing. The, that P2, that lump sum at the end, that's basically going to be your maturity value, right? So you just plug those in in your calculator just the same exact way that you would do it otherwise or into an Excel spreadsheet or, or however else you're doing it, okay? Now, this model here contrasts with the Gordon growth model, okay? So the Gordon growth model uh, is showing us is that we have a basic equation here which is saying our price today is equal to uh, the dividend next period divided by R minus G. Okay? We also have an equivalent statement 
uh, basically, which is saying that we look at our dividend, because a lot of times we're just going to know what our dividend is now, and we're trying to figure out what our dividend is in the, in the next period, right? Because D1 is not going to happen for another year. So D1, D1 is going to be equal to D0 multiplied by 1 plus the growth rate. Remember that G is our growth rate. It's how fast we're growing. Okay? And that G is kind of that crucial figure, is that if you're looking at a question, you're trying to figure out what the value of the stock is, if you don't have G, if you don't have the growth, you can't use the Gordon growth model. It's probably going to end up being the discount dividend model. Okay? Uh, so we, we put the, this in, right? And we have, uh, we substitute that in, and we'll end up with P0 is equal to D0 times 1 plus G divided by R minus G. Okay? And this, this equation right here, is the same exact thing as this equation right here. Right? It just depends on which dividend payment you receive. If you get D0, then you're going to do it like, this, like the bottom one. If you get D1, you're going to do it like the one on the top. Okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and, and work a couple problems now. All right, uh, we're valuing a stock from Microsoft. You're estimating a stock price of $55 in two years. Right? So in two years, that, right, that's going to be P2 is $55.50. Okay, what we're solving for is what is the stock worth today? That's going to be P0. That's what we're solving for, right? Um, and relative riskiness to the stock, we need, we need a return of 3%, so that's going to be R is 3%. Okay, um, and we estimate over the next two years, we're going to be receiving $1.10 in annual dividends. So D1 is going to be 110. D2 is going to be 110. Okay. So if we set this up longhand, is that we're going to try and figure out the price today. And we have every, all the information we need already, already in this qu question. Okay, so it's going to be the 110 divided by 1 plus r, so 1.03. Okay. And then we have 110 divided by 1.03, right, which you know is, is squared, right? Because that's coming in the second period, right? So this is d1, this is d2, and then out here we're going to have D2, right? So it's going to be the 5550 divided by 1.03. Remember that this is going to be squared as well. Okay. So when we plug it in, if we're, if we're using our calculator, payment is going to be 110. Future value is going to be 5550. I over Y is going to be 3. N is going to be 2, right? Because we're receiving two payments. There's one payment, there's two payments. Okay? And now we are solving for present value. And so we end up with a present value of $54.42. All right. Uh, once again, we're looking at another question. Uh, the same sort of thing. We're just looking at it in seven years, so I'm not going to write this one out longhand. Um, but basically, what we have is we have a stock price of 54.75 in seven years. So right, this is going to be P7, right? So it's 54.75. Uh, we estimate we need a return of 20%. So R is going to be 20, and then we know that D1 through D7 are all going to be the exact same, and that is going to be 3.91, right? There's no growth in this scenario on the, this discount dividend model, okay? So these dividends, the entire time, we're going to be 391. And that's one of the other crucial components. If we have zero growth, right, so this is also referred to as a zero growth uh, model, is that we know we're going to be using this model. We know we're going to be using this construct. Okay? So we have the, this, this information in here. Uh, do we have enough information to uh, figure out what the value of this stock is? Absolutely. And the way we're going to enter this is that we have a future, in our calculators, we have a future value of 54.75. We have a discount rate of 20. So, right, this is I over Y. We have a payment in the amount of 3.91. And we have a number of time periods of 7. And we are solving for present value. Compute present value. And we get a present value of $29.00 and 38 cents. Right, 29.38.
Sorry that it's messy. All right. Uh, now on this one, uh, we have a couple different pieces of information. They just paid a dividend. In what period did they pay this dividend? Right. That's our the thing we have to question. What period did they pay this dividend? They, they, if they just paid it, that's going to be D0, right? It just happened. That's right now, right? So D0 is 3.15. We expect to grow at 26%. So that means that G, we have a growth right here of 26%. And we have a required return of 29%. Which, just as a side note, that growth rate at 26% is, is extraordinarily high. Okay. Uh, but do we have enough information to put this in? Yes. We can use the Gordon growth model, or, or otherwise known as the constant growth model. And recall that that is going to be P0 is equal to D0 times 1 plus G divided by R minus G. Okay? So we have 3.15 times 1.26, right? Because that's our growth rate, divided by 0.29 minus 0.26. And remember that when we put in these growth rates and the uh, required rate to return, that they do have to be inserted as decimals. Okay. So we have 3.15 multiplied by 1.26, right? And that is divided by uh, 0 0.03. So we have a current stock price of 132.30. All right. Now we're looking at another one uh, using uh, Gordon Growth Model. Uh, so we just bought 241 shares of BMW uh, for two dollars and ninety-nine cents each. Uh, right after, so this is um, this is the price um, is two ninety-nine. Okay, and then the price changes. Okay, because you look at this and you say, oh wow! Right after you bought them, like three seconds later, BMW's earnings report come out, and basically now. You're able to, eat, you have a, a computer model that, that spits out these numbers and say, all right, this is what we think the growth is going to be. This is what the required return is going to be. So we, we want to come up with what the new valuation is. So this is the old P0. We want to come up with a new P0. What is the current price of this stock right now? Okay. So we are estimating that the growth rate is now going to be 6%. We're saying that R has a required return of 19%. And their most recent dividend, right, so this is going to be D0, is 0 0.39. Um, so we want to be able to com compute what our total profit or loss is. But in order to do that, we have to compute what this new, uh, the, the new price is going to be. Okay? And once again, we do this with the uh, D0 times 1 plus G divided by R minus G. Okay? And so that means we're going to have 0.39 times... 1.06 divided by 0.19 minus 0.06. And which tells us that our new P0 here is $3.18. Okay? So we now want to figure out what our total profit and loss is, right? We bought 241 shares. Okay? So our uh, basically, in order to figure out what profit is, right, is that profit is equal to uh, your sales minus purchases. Okay, and in this case, our sales are going to be, uh, so we have 241 shares, okay, and we are going to multiply those number of shares by the amount that we made or lost on each share, okay. The amount that we the sold these for, they're now worth $3.18. And we're going to subtract off the $2.99. Okay, which means that we have a 19 cent share, 19 cent gain per share. Okay, so we have 19 cents that we just, uh, the value of our stock went up by 19 cents. So we're going to take our 19 cents and we're going to multiply it by the um, number of shares that we had. It was at 241. So our total amount of profit here is $45.79. $45.79. That is our total profit. Okay. That's how we come up with that. 